Hello everyone, it's Mark here. In this beaded tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to these absolutely beautiful beaded bead Moroccan inspired earrings. Again, we're using seed beads and gemstones combined to make these absolutely incredible motifs. So without further ado, come along and join me and I'm going to introduce you step by step on how to make these beautiful, beautiful pieces of jewellery. So, what do we need to make these incredibly beautiful earrings? Well, you're surprise, surprise, not very much actually. What I've got here in front of me are all the ingredients you're going to need. If there are any items here that you're unsure of, being a new good jewellery designer, just make sure that you leave a comment and subscribe and, and like the site, and then we'll be able to answer any of your questions you may have. Beaded wise, we've got 11 O seed beads and 8 O's. Then I'm using a six millimeter gemstone, and this is amethyst, my birthstone. I've got great affinity with this stone, and I try to use it as often as I can. We're making earrings once again, so we need our earring posts, and we also need our shepherd hooks. And tools wise, we need, again, a piece of white fireline. This is your six pound break weight. And we need a piece, a slightly longer this time. This will need to be about 100 centimeters long, about a meter because there are quite a few more steps involved with the thread. I'm going to be using a size 12 needle. And then tools, we will need a sharp pair of scissors for our thread work. And then also, because we're going to be cutting our head pin, our, our post here, and we're also going to be manipulating the shepherd's hooks here, we need some wire cutters to cut our head pin to length. Then we also need our flat nose pliers and our round nose pliers. That's all we're going to need. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do, we've got our piece of thread, but we're not going to add a needle to it yet. We're going to do this, this first section freehand. So I'm going to take my length of thread and I'm going to pop on the thread four of our amethyst beads, first of all. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. No seed beads in between, just our four amethyst. And then what we're going to do is we're going to slide those down and we're going to have on the left hand side a tail of about 20 centimeters, then our four beads, and then the rest, the remaining length of thread, 80 centimeters to my right hand side. So what we're going to do with our left hand piece of thread, we're going to go round underneath the beads and feed it through in the opposite direction from where the, uh, the longer thread is coming through the bead. So we're going to pop that through the bead. So when we pull nice and tight, we have a little diamond of four. So we have our short thread on the left and our longer thread on the right. So on the left hand thread, we're going to pop on one of our amethyst. And on our longer thread, we're going to pop on two. So we're going to thread on, and these have got really good sized drill holes. Okay, so we've got two on one side and one on the other. So what we're going to do, the side that have one amethyst on, we're going to take our thread and we're going to thread it through the second of the two amethyst we've just added in the other direction, in the opposite direction. So we're going to pull that nice and tight and we have our second diamond. So we're going to repeat this step once more. One amethyst on our left thread, the shorter thread. Then we're going to pick up our longer thread and we're going to pop two amethyst on. So one and two. We're going to slide those down so it meets the rest of the beads. And once more, we're going to take our shorter thread round and through the opposite direction through the second amethyst on the opposite side. So when we pull now, we have three little diamonds above each other. Now in a future tutorial, so make sure you like and subscribe so we can inform you when we're going to be launching it, we're going to be showing you the same type of technique, but for a bracelet, okay? So just bear this in mind. So to continue with the earring, we're not going to make any more diamonds. What we're going to do is we're going to pick up an amethyst on the shorter thread on the left, and we're going to take our thread up 
and thread it through from left to right through that top amethyst. Okay, so don't, don't pull tight at this point. Then we're going to take our longer thread. We're going to pick up one of our amethyst, like so, and we're going to feed. So we're going to miss the space here and sew through the top amethyst again in the opposite direction. Okay, thread that through. So then when we pull those two threads in opposite directions, what happens is it concertinas up and forms this amazing little beaded bead. So this is, called, this is known as a beaded bead. So you can see it forms that perfect little square pattern. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take the shorter thread, I'm exiting through this bead towards me here, and I'm going to take it and I'm going to sew through the three beads, so make sure that I attach the threads to a, a meeting point. So I'm going to sew through one, and as you can see, because we've got such large drill holes in the amethyst, it's quite simple to thread through without the aid of a needle. So we're just going to sew that through, like so, and then we're going to pull those nice and tight. So we, we, we now have our threads at the same point. So I'm going to tie a single knot and just give it a little jiggle just to make sure that all the beads are sitting nice and neatly. Then I'm going to do a double knot, all nice and tight, and then a single knot just for luck. Okay, so that's our beaded bead. Now at this point, you can cut off that thread or you can pop on a needle and sew it through before you cut it off. But I'm going to leave it on for a second. So what I'm going to do with the longer thread is I'm going to now attach my needle. So I'm just going to attach our, and this is a size 12 tulip needle. So we've threaded our needle. Now what we're going to do is we're, at the moment we're going to use our little 8-0 beads. So I'm going to sew away from the knot and I'm going to pick up an 8-0 bead and I'm going to sew into the next bead. And then I'm going to do the same. So I'm picking up an eight, sewing across. Picking up an eight into the next. And can you see that I've picked a gold bead here? So it's, it's, it's quite a regal look to it. So we have four eight O's in between the beads at the top. And then we're going to repeat that along the bottom row. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to wiggle through. So I'm in the right direction to then I'm going to fill the gaps with the eight O's around the bottom. So you can now see that in between all of the beads, in that beaded bead, we have a gold eight O. So now we're going to embellish our pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm exiting inside the, the, the cross, if you like. So I'm going to follow that pattern and I'm going to pick up the following combination. I'm going to pick up one, two, three of my little 11 O's. So one, two, three, then a gold, eight O, and then three 11 O's. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew across the gap diagonally into the 8-0. Okay, so it completely fills the gap across. And then I'm going to go diagonally in the other direction. So I'm going to pick up three of my 11s. One, two, three, then an eight and then one, two, three, elevens. I'm going to go diagonally across the gap into the next eight o. So that's two sides done. And then the next side, we're in the right position again. So I'm going to pick up one, two, three, then an eight, one, two, three. And I'm going to again go diagonally into the next eight o. So that's three sides done. And then we've got one 
side left and we're in exactly the right position to fill the gap. So I'm going to fill that with one, two, three of our 11s, one of our 8s and three of our 11s, one, two, three. And I'm going to sew into the 8 diagonally opposite. So at this point now, if we pull nice and tight, we have half a zigzag, if you like, going around the outside. So we're going to finish the zigzag completely now. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go up to the 80 in the center of that group. Okay, and I'm just going to turn 90 degrees because I want to head diagonally to the 80s that are around the top edge. Now this time, because we're exiting halfway through this, this band of seven beads, we're just going to pick up three of our little 11s and I'm going to sew into the eight at the top. So you can see the zigzag pattern starting to form. I want to go diagonally across. The 80 is already there, so we know we're only going to be using our little 11s. So one, two, three. And all you, so if you, can, if you can notice that we've got the 80 facing this direction, okay? So imagine number two and number eight on the clock face. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go diagonally across and I'm going to go horizontally through the eight. So I'm just going to sew into the right hand side to the left. And can you see it straightens that 80 perfectly. So I'm just going to pull that across and you can see how it envelops. So we're going to repeat with one, two, three. One, two, three. And we're going to go across into the eight. We're going to go up three. So in this part, in this little step here, you don't add any eight O's, it's all little elevens. I'm going to sew across. Then we're going to pick up another three. So you can definitely see how it inspires the Moroccan feel. Maybe you don't feel it's so Moroccan, let us know in the comments bar and uh, let me know what, um, where you think these earrings would sit nicely. I'm going to go into the 8 -o. This is our last couple of sections. Let's move that tail out of the way. So one, two, three, into the 8. And this is our last little section. And then we can um, build it into an earring, which is all the great fun. So we're going to sew into that last 8. Okay, so you can see now that the, the bead has got all of the little cross zigzags all the way around, and the top and the bottom are free because that's where we're going to attach the, the next section with the earrings to. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew away. And then what I might do is sew through the gemstone, like so, because we need to find a suitable place to tie off. And then I'm going to go underneath the 80, little loop, going to sew up once and up twice. I'm going to pull that nice and tight so the knot is now secure. I'm going to sew through a couple of beads to get away from the knot. I never, I never cut close to the knot because you don't want the, the knot to be accidentally cut through with your scissors and, the, and everything unravels after your hard work. So now I'm going to go in and cut off my threads. So we have our little beaded bead all ready to be turned into an earring. So you can see we've got the amazing little zigzag pattern on the roller, it's like a little wheel. And then we have the top and the bottom empty to construct our earring. So this is all about experimenting actually. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up one of my head pins. So this, this is a head pin. It's a two and a half inch length of quite strong wire with a little ball at the end. Now the little ball is to stop all of your beads from falling off, we won't want that. So what I'm going to do to complete my earring is I'm going to take my head pin and I'm going to pick up, first of all, an 11-0, then an 8 then one of our little amethyst, and then on my needle I'm going to put six little 11 -0s. So you can see the head pin is quite a thick um, piece of metal, but you can still get the little 11 seed beads on. 
So that's my six elevens. Now you don't have to do this, but I just wanted a bit of color to go through the center because what we're going to do is we're going to take our little beaded bead and the side that, that is plain, we're going to pop our head pin through so it acts as a little stopper on the end. And then inside we've got that nice little neat row of 11 O's, which just to give it some stability. And then we can then decide what we're going to place above the beaded bead. So we're always going to use an amethyst, first of all, because once that's in place, it's it's stuck. It rolls, it rolls round beautifully, but it doesn't, it won't move from side to side. So then we're going to replicate what we've done on the earring. So an 11 and then, sorry, an eight and then an 11. But I always find that when you're making an earring, the top section before the beaded bead should be slightly longer than the bottom, just for, for aesthetic. So I'm just going to repeat 8, 11, 8, 11. Okay, so that's our earring pattern. So as you can see, we've got quite a bit of wire left at the end of our head pin. So we're going to use our flush cutters and we're going to cut the wire, leaving about a centimetre which is plenty enough length. Then we're going to use our round nose pliers and I'm going to make sure that they're sat nice and neatly on top of the last bead. I'm going to turn 90 degrees to get a nice right angle and then I'm going to make a nice loop curving back at myself. And just before we close that little loop, you can see just there, just before we close that little loop, we're going to take one of our little shepherd's hooks and we're going to place it in that loop, making sure that last little seed bead doesn't get caught. We're going to close the door on the earring, nice and tight. And then what we're going to do with our flat nose pliers is at the moment, the shepherd's hook is completely straight, the section that goes through the ear. And just to add a bit of security, what I do with my shepherd's hooks is I pop my flat nose pliers in and I just give the tail a little kink at the end. And that just adds a bit of security when in the ear. So as you can see with simple steps, so we made our beaded bead first of all, then we added the seed bead embellishments, and then we added the head pin and the metal work to actually make the earring. So in three easy steps times two, you make this beautiful pair of Moroccan inspired earrings. So have a go, let me know what you think, leave your comments uh, in the bar below, and uh, if you haven't already, like and subscribe the demonstration channel, and um, who knows, next tutorial may be a full length bib necklace using the same motif. The, the possibilities are endless. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and very much look forward to seeing you again soon. And remember, like and subscribe. See you soon.